Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time! We have a full guide for the turret ballista falconer in last day part. The turret ballista falconer is a build I've been waiting for a really long time and now in 1.0 we can actually play a proper ballista build that's super strong and can do all content in the game. And even with this current setup I'm using there is still room for improvements and I'll go over them later on in the gear section of this build. Uh, the build got some insane clear and pretty decent single target damage as well and also with the falconer we get some new ways to improve our survivability as well. And the footage in the background is from between Corruption 2 to 300 and we've also been able to do Yulra on T4 without no problems multiple times. And let's go over quickly how the build works. So we put down ballistas and it will kill just everything around us screen wide and by using a soul gambus fallacy makes it so the ballistas will always crit. And this opens up a tons of different options to the build. And what it does is it will give us 100% critical strike chance if we have not dealt a critical hit recently. And combining this with the perfect aim passive from the ballista node which will make it so our critical strike chance and multipliers now also applies to our ballista and same goes here for the falcon for its own passive go for the eyes. As we don't deal any damage ourselves, this 100% crit chance is going to be up all of the time. It's a huge for a single item and I will be amazed if this is going to not be changed for the 1.1 release. Uh, but we will just wait and see what happens. And even without this amulet it's quite easy to get crit capped for this build. So it will still be viable if they would change it later on. A normal Gambler's Fallacy works exactly the same here, uh, but you will lose some crit multi and it's also not possible to get a legendary potential on it. And after we put down our Ballistas, we use our mobility skill Aerial Assault and this will boost them with tons of damage and also attack speed from the Tactician's passive. And here we can stack Intelligence for damage multipliers to our Ballistas which make it so we can also even consider going board with this build. I however do prefer the light base and we also get tons of survivability from the fitness them. And from this we get 21 health on crit from all of our minions and as they always will do a crit we get a huge sustain from this with a falcon and 6 ballistas up at all the time. We also get minion critical multiplier from stacking crit awareness here as well. I have not really tried to mid max this yet, but I do feel that this have a lot of potential as you can get it on most of your gear. Aerial Assault is also a travel skill and this makes us able to take advantage of one of the experimental mods on the boots which makes a X amount of minions teleport around us after we use a traversal skill. And this is really helpful and pretty much a must have for this build as it really helps out with the mana sustain problem this build have. And the ballistas cost around 40 mana each to summon and with the boost make so we can use every assault around 2 times before we have to resummon them again. And getting some mana reading really helps a lot here. I am currently have 2 T6 on my gear and it feels really smooth while playing. And you would also need to have some extra flat mana here as well. And the best way to get this is getting it from the blessing from ending the storm. Which you can get up to 90 flat mana from which is more than enough. Dive Bomb is another skill that we are using. I'm basically setting it up as to be auto casted for me by using the num lock loop. And it will just shoot out wherever the mouse key is. But not only do we deal a lot of damage, but it will also make us gain some extra mana and recover a portion of our remaining traversal skill cooldown when we hitting a rare or boss enemy. We also spec into Wings of Shadow and this makes us dive an extra time to the closest shadow. And by setting up smoke bombs and specking into Umbral Assault passive will make smoke bomb create shadows each second around the cloud. 
So each time we use Dive Bomb, the Shadows will now also get Dive Bomb on them. And this will get repeated and uh, the clouds will basically never get removed as they are also going to be refreshed each time a dive bomb hit the smoke cloud. So that's basically how the build works and I'll go over each of the skills more in depth later in the video. First let's check out what gear we are using. And do keep in mind that this is an important character and there are still going to be some room for improvements here. The amulet is called Soul Gambler's Fallacy and here we get 100% critical strike chance if you have not dealt a critical strike recently. And as mentioned before, this is going to be applying to our turret and also for our falcon and as we don't deal any damage ourselves, this 100% critical strike chance will apply to them all of the time. We also get some critical strike multiplier from this as well. We're also using Bone Claimant's Bar Boot and uh, this helm gives uh, us both Dex and Intelligence here and uh, both of those scale our damage. Dex will just improve the turrets and Falcon overall and Intelligence we get when we're using the Aerial Assault skill. We're also getting some uh, extra armor here which is quite nice and also the Necrotic Resist also helps. Lutheran Stand is a one of a kind bow here and this will give us plus two to maximum ballistas and it's just huge for this build. We also get increase to mana, some cold and physical resist here and also some flat bow physical damage for minions. And as our turrets also we get all the damage from the bow here, we want to get as much flat damage here, minion damage and crit multiplier as we can. Also stuff like bow damage, increased physical damage, works great as well. For the body armor we're using Bowen's Flesh. Here I was very lucky to get the plus two additional ballistas, which is going to be the one uh, class mod that you want to go for your chest here. Overall we don't really get that much from the chest. The big thing here is going to be with the critical strike avoidance. And this is going to be uh, combining with finest them here as we get critical strike multiplier for our minions per crit avoidance that we have. We want to go for Turkey's rings for the minion base here. Uh, also try to go for dexterity, get some mana region as I mentioned earlier. And Relic here you want to go for the level of Ballistas and this also will give some increased Ballista attack speed, really huge. Other than that, Int, Dex, Health, Resist. Uh, for the Boots, as mentioned earlier, you want to go for the Experimental Mod, Minions Teleport Around You after you use a Traversal Skill. A must have for this build to be able to sustain your mana. And also do keep in mind that uh, you will be able to have 6 ballast up at all time and also your falcon which is going to be a total of 7 minions so having a T5 is going to be the minimum to be able to teleport with all those minions. For the quiller here we also got some chance to shred armor on hit and you might wonder why we have this when I told you that we don't hit for ourselves. Well. This is going to be from the Falconry and from Rending Talons. And from this passive gives us a portion of different ailment chances here. In this case it's going to be the Shred Armor and uh, this will apply to our Falcon hits so it do add up a little bit there. You could get it from uh, other sources as well. I got it on Quiver, you can get it on your amulet and also from your gloves. To sum this up, some of the stats you really want to focus on is going to be Health, Resist, Flat damage both for bows and for minion bow damage, dexterity, intelligence and also mana region. Preferred a T7 on belt would be enough I feel if you manage to time your abilities right. Critical strike avoidance and not only for the obvious here which makes us take no critical damage but also really useful for dealing damage from the finest them passive which I mentioned earlier which will give our minions critical strike multiplier from this as well. And then also increase bow, face or crit multi or minion damage works great here as well. And for the idols I just went with normal health idol as it's quite hard to scale up your health as a rogue and health and resist or if you can double health would be the way to go here. And currently there are 
two things that we don't have for this build. And the first thing is going to be a pair of Morning Frost boots with the Minion Teleport mod on them. Morning Frost gives us one cold damage to attacks per point of dexterity. And that's a lot of flat damage which the turret will get 75% from, uh, from the shared enhancement passive. And currently what I'm doing is that I have a pair in my inventory that will switch on to on boss fights to boost the damage. And just as an example you can see here that it's quite a decent increase uh, even with my current setup which is not maxed out at all. And uh, it's just getting even more crazy when you realize that you can have up to 6 ballistas up. And the second thing is going to be a pair of Euler's Obsession with chance to shred armor on hit. And if you're unfamiliar with the gloves, they basically make it so the stats on the item also applies to your minions. And with armor shred there are going to be a lot of stacks on our enemies and as the ballistas have so much attack speed. I have probably done over 20 gloves at the moment, but currently with no luck. And for the blessing, here we first got for the Black Sun, here we went for a Void Resist. From Reign of Dragon you can go for All Resist. Age of Winter we get some Physical Resistance. Then as I mentioned earlier, we have from Ending the Storm we can get some Flat Mana. And then also from Spirit of Fire you can go for some extra Flat Armor. So let's go over our skills real quick here, starting with the Ballista. Practical builds for a huge damage multiplier and also more attack speed. Perfect aim makes it so all critical strike chance and critical multiplier now also apply to our ballista. Shared enhancement makes it so our damage multiplier also applies to our ballista but at a reduced ratio. Working balls make it so ballista now pierce enemies. I like to go for two points here for some extra clear. Sturdy foundation for some extra ballista health and also so it lasts longer. And Bolt Rain, just one small point here, so we have a small chance for some extra projectiles for some increased clear speed. We're using Air Assault as our mobility skill and also to move our ballistas. Avian Hunter for some increased damage, but most importantly, some increased cold and recovery speed here. Tactician, making so after we are landing, all of our active ballistas will prioritize target around you and deal more damage per intelligence. We get 2% per intelligence here, and we also get a huge boost to increase the attack speed at 75%. Skyward Swoop makes a portion of Aerial Assault cooldown is recovered when our Falcon hit an enemy. Refreshing Resolve makes it so when we are using Aerial Assault, it will recover a portion of our missing mana. Coordinating Assault makes it when we using Aerial Assault recover a portion of the remaining cooldown of Falconry and also Die Bomb per 10% maximum mana that we have. Moving on to falconry and this is going to be to summon our falcon for us and also to make us use our other falcon abilities. Hunter spoil makes so when the falcon kills a enemy or hit a boss or rare enemy it restores health and mana based on our total attribute. Bird of prey makes so the falcon strike which is a ability that we get from the falcon skill here easily kill enemies that are below a health threshold, in this case it's going to be 16%. Train to Hunt makes a portion of the highest of your global increased melee, throw or bow damage now apply to the Falcon's damage. Go for the Ice, as mentioned earlier, this is going to be the same but for the crit instead. And Exposed Weakness makes a portion of our critical multiplier now also applies to the Falcon. I put a point in Sidekick here, this makes our Falcon now prioritize enemies close to the target location. And this is really helpful when you're using dive bomb for example, then the falcon will just start to strike enemies around where it dive bombed. And rendering talon just makes a portion of all the element chances here from our character will now apply to the falcon hit at 200% of its value. And then we have dive bomb, it deals tons of damage but also will restore some mana. Rush the hunt will reduce the cooldown here by a ton, 48%. Focused Hunter, we're using 3 points here and this, this is really important as it will reduce the mana cost by 12 and making this skill uh, free for us. And Rapid Pursuit makes so Dibron hits at least one boss or rare enemy, we regain mana and we'll also regain a portion of our remaining traversal skill cooldown. 
Rushing Wind will increase Dive Bomb damage, but it also makes it so the Dive Bomb will hit the ground faster, which just makes the skill feel a lot better. And on Wing of Shadow, Mega Soul Dive Bomb now creates a Shadow Falcon, and this will now strike at the same location as your own shadows. Dancing Shadow makes so your Shadow Falcons that land inside the area of the Smoke Bomb takes off again after a short delay, so this basically makes it so the Dive Bomb will hit twice. Cloud Gather makes it so the Falcon lands inside the area of the Smoke Bomb, the smoke lamp will now last longer. And this is where I mentioned earlier that will refresh the duration. And then we have a smoke bomb itself. And the first passive here is going to be Umbral Assault. And this makes it so it now creates shadows each second at a random location at the smoke cloud. Smoke screen arrow makes it so when we have a bow equipped on us, we can now shoot out the smoke bomb instead at the target location. Fingering fumes for some increased duration. Impending Gloam for some bigger area and growth speed. Shrouded in Darkness grants us uh, some Dusk Shroud stacks here, which will grant us some extra glancing blow chance and dodge rating. And Rapid Concealment makes so those smoke clouds just grant stacks of Dusk Shroud more frequently. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree, but for more information about the build, I do recommend you go and check out Last Epoch Build Planner. And to the top of the build planner you can also go to loot filters where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the turret ballista falconeer? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!